Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Peter Jackson's career, we will be talking about The Lovely Bones. The Lovely Bones came out in 2009 and stars Mark Wahlberg, Rachel Weisz, Susan Sarandon, Sayors Ronan, and Stanley Tucci. And it's about Susie Salmon, played by Sayors, who has been murdered and watches over her family and her killer from purgatory. She must weigh her desire for vengeance against her desire to help her family heal. This isn't the first time Peter has directed a film in the drama department where he has used visual storytelling as his aid. This takes me back to his early works called Beautiful Creatures, which is on my channel, you're more than welcome to check it out, which is about two girls who fell in love with each other as friends, but they were told they were no longer allowed to see each other. The storytelling for Beautiful Creatures was sharp, visually appealing, with beautiful scope and in-depth themes that worked to the story's detriment. Here, The Lovely Bones is attempting to do that very same thing. The only problem is it's a mix of visual storytelling and deep psychological themes included and not and limited to its adaptive source material comes off as a little hodgepodgey. And that's not saying the quality of his film and the hard work that he put into this film is bad. Just the tone of the film wavers between dark and deep and lighthearted and offbeat. So let's back up for a second. What do I mean by visual storytelling? Which is just a fancy way of saying more scenery, less words, and let the audience decide for themselves what is going on without having to be told. For example, I'm going to use this scene, I'm not going to give away spoilers, but a man is holding a dead flower in his hands. In the meantime, Susie is, what well, we're going to coin the term in the movie, the in-between, is witnessing this and... She is trying to tell this man what he is thinking and feeling is correct by blossoming the flower in his hand. It's a very beautiful yet dark and compelling scene used with very little dialogue. Much of the film is like this without really telling and mostly showing. It can get a little cumbersome to get lost without much understanding in the metaphoric narrative. Peter Jackson does do a good job with this adaptation which is why I could assume that this was a very hard novel to adapt into a film. But it does feel like it's riding along those lines, that little fine line where there are fans of the book, where you're most likely to hear it was better explained in the book. To me, all of these themes and elements, visual craft and execution can be super noticeable and distracting at points. For instance, there are bits of the film where the visual storytelling clash with its more grounded aspects of the film. Take the scene I mentioned earlier. Susie makes the flower blossom in the man's hand, trying to visually tell him something. But if you don't know how this is possible or why this is happening in any way, which it doesn't explain itself, you're kind of feeling something's off. Stanley Tucci is great as George Harvey and has his moments of chilling undertones, but it conflicts with the often campy dialogue and great atmosphere. <laughs> Try to wrap your head around that. When you watch his story arc, I would want you to be aware that his progression in this film does not follow the conventional path. I've heard at least one response from someone enjoying his comeuppance and the polar opposite of where this film has become preachy. All in all, I enjoyed this film, but it feels like it didn't fully quite commit to what it set out to do. The dialogue can be a little bit flat, too. It's boisterous or lighthearted, and that's just kind of how the film goes. Perhaps I may not be alone in that thought, but the film is beautiful and the message is not quite lost on me. In the end, guys and gals, this is a well-made film that is a melting pot of elements and themes that waver from light to dark and goes fairly quick. Some of you can attach yourself fairly quickly, other moments come down to the desire of seeing much of the themes explored and you're just le left with not enough. This doesn't change the fact that it was well handled and I did enjoy myself for the most part, but I would have to give The Lovely Bones a like it, but well, I probably wouldn't watch again any more than I would want to own it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're new to this channel or been around, I will always ask for you to comment and subscribe. And if you do comment, please be kind and reasonable. Take it easy, be good to yourself, and I'll see you guys next time. Okay.